to be here. Okay. Welcome, be very welcome, to the mess that is my mind. Not so messy right now that everything looks fine. Come on, don't be scared. I promise we don't bite. The mini-mis inside have tied it all around. They don't look like me. They do and say aside. But one of them doesn't. Breaking havoc in the mind. She's not entirely me, even though she looks the part. She's a soldier in a war that always goes too far. She's scared, and she's wounded, and she's heavily prepared for the dangers that she says that are always out there. This, my friends, is a poem that I, Doris Perez Naranjo, wrote for you regarding anxiety. Uh, and that is what we'll be talking about today. Uh, anxiety, anxiety disorders, and how to deal with them. So let's get into it. Today we're gonna see what is anxiety, uh, how to manage it, and a small conclusion and recommendations, maybe if you wish to take them, or if you maybe need them. So what is anxiety? Anxiety is a perfectly normal human emotion. It's something everybody feels once, at least, in the lifetime. It's a reaction that your body has when you feel in danger. According to the American Psychological Association, anxiety can be defined as a stress response that your body generates when you feel in danger, be it perceived or be it real. Um, it's like a panic button that your brain has. You see danger and your brain goes like, we're in danger, we have anxiety, we need to address this. It has somatic symptoms, aside from the mental symptoms that we all already know way too well. So it's sweat, restlessness, tension, you can't sit still, your neck is stiffened, you have a rapid heartbeat like it's gonna jump right out of your chest. We know that feeling? Mm -hmm. Yes, we know that feeling. It also triggers the fight or flight response. Who has heard about the fight or flight response? Okay, now, did you know that the fight or flight response actually has a third item? It's fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. So the fight response is very self-explanatory in itself. You address the danger, you confront it. The flight response is not really fine, it's running away. You run away from the issue, you hide, you do anything to avoid it. The freeze response is exactly what it sounds like. You go full, Meltdown, lockdown, you just stand there. You can't face it, you can't run, you just freeze. It happens a lot, it has nothing wrong, it's just the way your brain is hot wired and as we already know, everybody's made different. So this is what normal anxiety looks like. Anxiety rises when you have a detonator, you feel in danger, you feel anxiety, then after the danger is gone, then anxiety is gone too. What happens when that danger doesn't go away. That is an anxiety disorder. There are different anxiety disorders, but the one I'm gonna address most today is the general anxiety disorder, or GAD. According to the American Anxiety and Depression American Association, around 3.1% of the US population suffers from general anxiety disorder. What is this general anxiety disorder? Remember that danger, danger, stress, result? Well, that's a cycle that we call the worry cycle. The worry cycle is an anticipation to that danger that we're feeling. But in a generalized anxiety disorder, that worry cycle never stops. It's an ongoing cycle that starts over and over and over and it never lets you go into a relaxing phase, that tension never disappears, your heart is never gonna chill out. It's just not going to happen. But, um, it's just the way your brain is going. There are no probable causes for general anxiety disorder. We still don't know why it happens. It is believed that it has like brain biology and chemistry related. It is also related to environment or past trauma. And as everything in life, there are different variations of it. There are phobia, social anxiety, panic disorder, agoraphobia, and separation anxiety. And they are very self-explanatory. The only one that may be weird is maybe agoraphobia. For anyone that doesn't know, agoraphobia is the aberrant fear of people and crowded spaces. Agorapho people that suffer from agoraphobia can almost not go out of their house. 
it's pressing, it's paralyzing. And, and a fun fact to like add into it, of that 3.1% of the population I mentioned that suffers from JD, only 43% are treated. What about the other 57? What do they do? How do they go on with their lives? Because believe me, it is exhausting. <laughs> we do different things. I made up meds. Meds is not a real thing. I made it up to, um, I don't know, kind of condense it. I am not a meds fan. I actually don't know anything about sports. <laughs> but um, meds for me stands for medical assistance, emotional grounding, therapy, and structure. First, medical assistance. As I said, it is a normal bodily reaction. So doctors know, they know, and they have help out for us, for you, for me, for your mom, for your sister, I don't know, for everyone. So there's psychiatry, there's psychology, there's medication in case you need it, because sometimes medication is needed. And studies made by the West Med News today show that a lot of people that take medication for anxiety, and depression, they do a lot better. Sometimes we don't need it, so we just go to psychology. We have group therapy, we have one-on-one -on -one sessions, and we do great. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with my therapist, and it's been getting a lot better. There's also, emo also emotional grounding. You find something or someone or a hobby that helps you stay anchored to the ground, to the earth, to whatever is actually going on, that kind of like helps you step out of that worry cycle. There's also therapy. Again, it's like a sub point of the medical assistance. There's psychology, there's support groups, there's Reddit groups, there's apps even. And, and finally, structure. Structure is a very personal for me. Uh, having a plan that makes you feel sure about what's going on, that makes you know that that worry cycle is just in your head. There's a real plan and things are actually working out. Plans make you feel better. And in conclusion, Emotions and anxiety are perfectly normal. Anxiety disorders are common and they can be treated. You are not alone. There are people out there that feel what you feel. And there are people out there that can help you. So remember, it's okay. Dealing with a mental health disorder needs a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And we feel you and we see you. So again, you are not alone. UCF has a lot of resources that you can count on if you were to need them. There's CAPS Crisis Line, there's National Suicide Prevention Line. If you are way too much into crisis, it's okay. There's a Crisis Text Line if you don't really want to talk, you just want to text. And because I'm a music junkie, I made a playlist for what my mental breakdown sounds like. So it's in the post discussion of the topics if you want to listen to it. I think it's fun. So finally, in conclusion, remember that you are not alone. Thank you.